How can the Hallmark Channel have a dark side? Family-friendly content, Christmas trees and cookies, picture-perfect romances. What's not to love? Well, how about controversies surrounding representation, sexual harassment allegations, and racism? Let's take a deep dive into the shady side of the Hallmark Channel. Between When Calls the Heart, the Garage Sale Mysteries movies, and numerous Christmas films throughout the years, Lori Loughlin was synonymous with the Hallmark Channel. Well, until 2019, that is. In March of that year, the Fuller House star was charged with conspiracy to commit mail fraud and honest services fraud for her involvement in the college cheating scandal. Lachlan and other A-list stars like Felicity Huffman paid bribes to guarantee their children's admission to top universities. According to NPR, Lachlan and husband Massimo Giannulli eventually pled guilty in August 2020. She was sentenced to two months in prison, two years of supervised release, a $150,000 fine, and 100 hours of community service. That wasn't her only loss, though. The Hallmark Channel reacted swiftly to the controversy, with parent company Crown Media Family Network issuing the following statement after the news broke. We are no longer working with Lori Loughlin and have stopped development of all productions featuring Lori. And as of this video, they've stuck to their word. Although Lachlan reprised her role of Abigail Stanton in 2021's When Hope Calls, based on Hallmark's When Calls the Heart, the series aired on GAC Family. In fact, Hallmark bore down on their previous stance, telling Showbiz Cheat Sheet that year, we do not have any plans to cast her in the future. Although they weren't responsible for her actions, it certainly wasn't the best look. The world was shocked when Hallmark announced Home & Family co-host Mark Steinis was leaving the show in May 2018. Even worse, as Deadline reported, his exit wasn't as simple as the channel made it out to be. In September of the same year, Steinis sued the network for wrongful termination, alleging he was fired for standing behind two female staffers who reported executive producer Woody Frazier for sexual harassment. After Steinis took his concerns to higher-ups, his work experience allegedly changed quite drastically. The suit claimed, Everything changed, with the network taking away his voiceover work, diminishing his role on the network, reducing his profile at industry events, cutting his salary by 25%, and ultimately firing him months before the end of his contract. Hallmark's parent company, Crown Media, responded in a statement, claiming the decision was ratings-based and saying Steinis' allegations held no merit. Crown Media later tried to get the case thrown out, but the motion was denied. In 2020, the case was dismissed after both parties settled out of court. But this wasn't the first time that Home and Family was sued for wrongful termination. According to Patch, 64-year-old director Robert Levy alleged that Frazier harassed and fired him due to his age in 2015, and it wouldn't be the last time either. Per deadline, celebrity chef Shanti Enojas, who also appeared on the show, sued Hallmark parent company Crown Media and creator Woody Frazier for sexual harassment and wrongful termination. The Hallmark Channel has always touted its policy of family values when it comes to its programming. However, its vague language came under fire in 2017, amidst wider conversations in the entertainment industry about diversity and inclusion. While the rest of the industry was catching up with Oscar So White, International Business Times noted that, at the time, the Hallmark Channel had premiered a record 86 films between its various networks, and only six of them starred non-white romantic leads. And on top of that, none of the films included black or Asian romantic leads. The company's then-president and CEO Bill Abbott dodged blame for lack of diversity, telling the outlet, it's an industry-wide problem. Others have made a little more progress than we have made, granted, but at the same time, we have a great track record of doing the right thing. It's not that simple. Could be. Regarding LGBTQ inclusion, Hallmark employs gay people. They have a line of LGBTQ greeting cards, and they even included a queer couple in an advertisement for their brick-and-mortar stores in 2016. But when it came to actual LGBTQ inclusion in their holiday films, the company certainly seemed to drag its feet. After a noticeable lack of queer characters in its programming, the company was asked about their inclusivity by Time Standard in 2017. Their reasoning at the time was less than sufficient. Former senior vice president of publicity Pam Slay told the outlet, 
There are no forced values associated with our networks, with the exception that we want to provide a quality viewing experience for every member of the family. We are not an issues-oriented network. Our goal is for every viewer who comes to us to feel happier and better because they watched. The answer sounded to many like a roundabout way of the network refusing to be inclusive of queer stories, especially considering that they already had a long-standing history of recruiting LGBTQ actors to play straight characters. Fast forward a few years, and the network has certainly changed its ways. In 2020, they premiered The Christmas House, starring real-life husbands Jonathan Bennett and Brad Harder, which marked the first openly gay couple in a Hallmark film. It was a landmark moment for representation for sure, but there was one more scandal that had to happen before Hallmark took the plunge. Hallmark was forced to seriously reevaluate its brand in December 2019 after Zola, a wedding planning website, removed its advertisements from the channel. Why? Because, according to CNBC, Hallmark removed four commercials which featured two women kissing each other. The network made the decision after a right-leaning organization, One Million Moms, launched a boycott against the station for airing the ads in the first place. After that initial decision, a lot of things happened at once. According to CNBC, Hallmark purported that it pulled the ad because the two brides kissing violated its policies. However, Zola commercials featuring heterosexual couples kissing were left on air, so that reasoning definitely doesn't hold up. In response to what appeared to be a homophobic and hypocritical decision, Boycott Hallmark went viral. Hallmark quickly reversed the decision and released a statement on Twitter admitting that it was the wrong call, saying, "...we are working with GLAAD to better represent the LGBTQ community across our portfolio, and we'll be reaching out to Zola to reinstate the commercials." The changes went higher up the ladder as well. In January 2020, longtime president and CEO Bill Abbott left the company and was replaced by Wanya Lucas, who would later tout new diversity benchmarks in a 2021 press tour. She stated, "...we are really seeking to make sure that everyone can see themselves in our movies." All right, let's go then. Former CEO and President Bill Abbott left the Hallmark Channel in January 2020 after controversy surrounding its handling of the commercial, only to take a position running its competition. Television brand Great American Country According to Bloomberg, Abbott was tapped to run the network after Hicks Equity Partners, a firm that was linked to the Republican National Committee. Also, the Trumps acquired GAC from Discovery Inc. for a cool $90 million. The channel rebranded to GAC Family rather than its former focus as a country music network, and they quickly got into the original Christmas movie business. While the company has not come out against queer storytelling, its website boasts its mission, which reads, "...to celebrate great American traditions and invest in timeless, family-friendly entertainment that honors Americana." Its 2021 holiday film lineup was noticeably devoid of any LGBTQ romantic leads, although some familiar Hallmark Channel faces have already made an appearance in GAC family films, they're watching the new company's politics closely. Actor Paul Campbell, who starred in Hallmark flicks like A God Wink Christmas and The Santa Stakeout, wrote on Twitter, "...I, like everyone else, will be keeping a close eye on the GAC content rollout. If there's a noticeable lack of meaningful inclusion, then no, I will not be working for that company." Hallmark aims to entertain and not offend, though the lengths it takes to guarantee that its content does not alienate families has garnered a fair share of criticism. While its original programming fits its protocols to a T, the channel also airs a handful of syndicated sitcom classics like Golden Girls, Reba, and Frasier, which don't always live up to the network's squeaky clean standards. I guess I have problems with men. No matter what they say, all they really seem to want is sex. <laughs> In 2011, defunct news site The Sop pointed out that the channel was censoring words like ass and hooker during reruns of Frasier and Golden Girls. This was despite the fact that the show's original dialogue had been allowed on television. The network told The Sop that the censorship occurred because Hallmark's standard and practices are very conservative, adding, "...there are words and phrases commonly used on other cable channels that the network deem unacceptable." Considering both sitcoms were known and beloved for their characters' often promiscuous conversations and situations, it seemed a bit like overkill to many. 
According to the Inquisitor, the network standards and practices department got the channel in hot water again in 2014 when they muted the word God while showing the 1994 film It Could Happen to You. The censorship was misread by viewers as a way of removing God from its content, and the network was forced to issue a statement. According to Christian Today, Hallmark argued that they thought they were doing the right thing in muting the word, saying, "...the word God was omitted as staying on the side of caution to not offend, as our Standard and Practices Department categorized it as God was being used in vain." For sure. Positive. For the most part, viewers know what to expect when they pop on a Hallmark Christmas film. There's warm fireside chats, a slightly overbearing if not entirely lovable family, and a homespun romance that affirms love in a small town is better than whatever awaits in the city. The network knows what its audience is looking for, but that doesn't mean their go-to tropes aren't entirely problematic. As The Signal pointed out in 2020, no one actually believes in the lessons from Hallmark movies. It's all for the meme or for something quaint to enjoy. While these justifications might be true, there are some heavily infused themes from these movies that represent darker aspects of our culture that we can't help but fall back on, as classic archetypes with complacency and comfort. Although Christmas has become a commercial holiday, the outlet argues that Hallmark films seem to be against the rise of industrialization. While Hallmark may be trying to uphold a positive view of family life and values, many storylines often revolve around homecoming and seem to be opposed to embracing other forms of lifestyle. There are central themes of their films that seem to discourage women from, quote, entering the workforce. Instead, they are often encouraged to give up big jobs, stay in their hometown near familiar faces, and raise a family. The outlet concludes, we also need to recognize and support a healthier work-life balance, too. Hallmark movies can promote this mindset of stepping back and valuing family, but careers drive our communities, too. It should also go without saying that the channel's depiction of the holidays are completely unrealistic. The decadent trees, perfect cookie platters, and romantic get-togethers set a standard no one can live up to. As the outlet also wrote, the holidays are stressful enough. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.